Yay! Yeah. I think we're on. We're on? Not yet. Not refresh it. I did. Uh, it takes a second update. That's why. Hey, everybody. We're All not right. sure if we're live. Yay, we're live. We're live! Hi! 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 Welcome to... Yankee Eye Hangouts! <laughs> we're gonna have Phil on every one, so you can do that at the yeah. beginning. Um, so just in case anybody doesn't know anybody, I'm Ben. I'm Sarah. I'm Phil. And we all shoot pictures. Um, we have a list of questions from you guys that you've been submitting, so we're going to go through them. Um, if anyone has questions in the middle, feel free to submit them at the form down there. Right there. Right Use down. your typing hands Yay. to do that. Yep. Um, also, this is really weird because we have no communication with you, so we're just oh. kind of talking to a computer screen. And <laughs> we're looking, we're just looking at, at our ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we look pretty good, so. All right. I was like, Damn, so this first name I'm going to completely butcher. Does anybody else want to try it? Leticia? Leticia? Yep. Leticia asks, or says, I love the moodier, stormy photos I see a lot of people post, but I myself struggle on overcast days and my photos end up looking lifeless. I even have a harder time editing those. Any advice on how to manage that? Thanks. You're welcome. Great question. <laughs> Good question. Um, first off, uh, I, okay, I was going to say, I was, I was looking at this question earlier with Ben and First off, there's a difference between a stormy day and an overcast day, and in Oregon, I think you like can really tell the difference here because yeah. in a really thick overcast day, there's not a lot of differentiation to the light, so most ways you turn, there's no it's the same. <laughs> it yeah. looks the same, mm -hmm. um, and you can definitely get that like kind of soft in look. But on a stormy day where there's there's definitely still directional light. Um, like always making sure that people are facing whatever direction the light is coming from. And even on uh, overcast day, there's still like yeah. a little bit of directional light. So just like paying attention to where the shadows are falling into the eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Any, any other questions? Uh, yeah, the reason you have them face the light is because that means you can expose for this and then the background will be darker. So you'll get the clouds and stuff yeah. a little bit darker. And a really easy way to tell that on overcast days is if you put your hand out and squint at it, and you can just kind of like spin around and it kind of turns into just like tones instead of an actual shape. So you can see like when it's brighter and when it's darker. Mm -hmm. You'll look really stupid, but it works. And I've done this a couple times. I think people just think I'm on LSD. <laughs> no, I tell my couples I'm like, this is a good tip to like take selfies and they're actually so curious about it. Like, <laughs> really? Just like, yeah, oh, like yeah. if you, get, you ever take like, sure, it's like, like a perfect way to take a perfect <laughs> iPhone. Mm -hmm. Awesome, so I hope that yeah. answers for you. Oh, the editing? Oh yeah, editing. Um, I edit mine the same. Um, I feel like if you want to bring this the sky in more, you can do um, was it recovery or highlights? Yeah, uh, or use a what is that a, a brush or radial gradient gradient filter? Yes, we are professionals. We are. So. <laughs> I don't I don't edit my um, like brighter day stuff like sunset stuff. I need different than I do. And the other thing I do is I might warm up. You know, it's all a white balance. I just kind of warm up yeah. the, the tones on an overcast day. I think, I, blue. yeah, I think I um, try and, and in the tone curve, I try and boost up where the skin tones are just a little bit mm -hmm. so that their faces, like, yeah, kind of smart. pop a little bit more. Just the middle part, generally, on the tone curve, if this is a square, the tone curve, the <laughs> skin part is kind of right in the middle. I just kind of pulling that have, up a little bit. We should have a paper so we can, like, <laughs> That should be good. Okay. Um, <laughs> Moving right. on. So next up, uh, Whitney and Trevor said, there's so much information out there. I get so confused learning from so many different people and their different styles, um, realistic, fantastical, dark and contrasty, light and airy, et cetera. Um, how did you learn to sift through mm -hmm. that and hone into your own style? That's really um, so for me, it was a matter of shooting a lot and shooting all of those styles to figure out which ones I actually liked and which ones I wasn't a fan of at all. And then just continually narrowing and narrowing and narrowing that down. I think it's kind of how I found mine. And it's it's such a shitty answer, but shoot a lot. Like that's really how you get there. <laughs> shoot a lot and shoot everything and whatever feels like right to you. Then try and focus in on that and like try and shoot more of that. Yeah. But well, it's, it's hard because like in 2016, there's like record-breaking numbers of workshops going on, <laughs> and everyone's doing things like this, and like posting, there's so much so much support groups, um, 
so it's hard like everyone's giving you their version of like you're asking questions like how do you do this how do you do this and you're asking a lot of questions that people are telling you their way and then it's like oh well there might be a lot of crap contrasting different ways of like how to yeah. do a certain thing i say like maybe just take one element of something that somebody says like sifting through the advice and like trying that if it's like working on um just getting couples to be more natural work on that and don't try to like when you go out for a shoot um you know if you want to play a little bit more work on just focusing on that and not trying to take in like 50 different things that people just recently told you work on the one thing at a time yeah. and that should help it be less overwhelming when you're trying to improve yeah and, and also I would say as far as the style thing don't try and be someone that you're not like do something that comes natural to you like if you really like light and airy stuff but you see that everyone's doing dark and moody things but it's not really you then don't try and do it yeah um, and I think one thing that really helped me is once I started to find things that I like to realize what it actually was in that photo that I took that I like because um, sometimes it's hard to actually recognize that so I actually teach a, a class on this and I break things down into emotional style and visual style and emotional style is like the movies that come across in your work so if I see a photo of mine that I really love I'll try and figure out what the emotional style is it might be like happy-go-lucky lifestyle kind of thing or it might be like calm intimate and then also the visual style which is like your visual patterns that you see in your work so it might be like earth tones it might be a certain type of light it might be a certain type of editing um, and like continually write those down and figure out what they are and what you're constantly drawn to and Phil also, spill coffee every yeah, he did. It's so super. Awesome. <laughs> um, one other thing, uh, I think I, we've all been doing this for. I, I mean, I've been doing this for six years, about six years mm -hmm. for you too. I don't know, nine, nine. Yeah. I don't know how you've been doing it for nine years. I don't either. <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> um, but my style has evolved over time. I don't know about you guys, but my style has definitely gone through changes. So. Um, for me, I don't think it's a thing that's necessarily that's going to be what I do forever. You know, I'm not going to find it and always do the same thing. Um, something that changes based on who you are and like what you're going through in life, yeah. and just like you as a person see the world differently based on things that happen in your life. So. And yesterday we we listened to This American Life on middle schoolers, <laughs> and I just realized that your style kind of follows the lines of like adolescence because at the very beginning you're going to be going like this way and that way really fast, and then you're going to kind of hit puberty and then kind of stay on the same track, but just like slowly move. Like on. wanting to make everybody happy, yeah, and so scared that you put something out there that you're going to be judged for it, <laughs> yeah, and like, well, maybe I won't show that because that I don't think that I'll do. That's actually very. It's similar, yeah. <laughs> you should listen to it. That, this American Life one on uh, podcast on on middle school. Yeah, so good. yeah, go get there. <laughs> um, so next up, Kate <laughs> said, "What are your thoughts on having separate Instagram accounts for a photography business um, and personal? Does this help with booking more shoots and attracting more people to your work than posting weddings, etc., on your personal account?" Great question. That is a good question. I, I like the idea of using Snapchat for personal stuff because I don't have to give a shit about it. It doesn't have to be curated. It's just yeah. sloppy. And it's personal, and the people that want to see my personal life can see it there. Mm -hmm. um, and then Instagram for me has become like a rolling portfolio. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not going to blog a full set, but I want to post one good photo. It all goes to Instagram. Yeah. Um, and I don't post anything personal on Instagram. I mean, like personal photos, like that are like you know. I'm really, really proud of, but it's not like filler stuff, not like coffee shots and like, you know, babies. I don't have a baby, but I would, but like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like you're, you're, it's the whole thing of like you get what you attract. Yeah. And, and for me, it's become a very, very curated portfolio yeah. of just the best of images and not, and using Snapchat for yeah. personal moments. Anytime moments. you see a baby on Instagram, you unfollow. I do. <laughs> right. um, but a cat, I will follow. Yes, yeah, that's true. If someone yeah. just posts a cat, I'll <laughs> Yeah. Um, so for mine, I do kind of similar. I do a curated like brand, essentially. I use that as just a brand outlet. So I post my work, but I also per post like personal photos. But those personal photos are like when I'm hiking or camping mm -hmm. or exploring and doing things that I want my potential clients to be doing. So if someone comes to my feed, they see the photos, if they like the photos, they also see that I camp and climb and hike and they go, oh, we do too, we'll probably get along with this guy. So it yeah. helps attract that kind of clientele. And then Snapchat is just cats that I want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty similar. 
mostly just uh, portfolio stuff goes on on it. But I think if, if you do have personal stuff that aligns with your brand, then yeah, so make sure the quality is similar. yeah, the quality is good and it and it like mixes in well. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, next up is Kylie. Um, she says, "How do you get your subjects to loosen up to get more natural expressions or smiles?" Sometimes it's awkward and stiff when I'm posing, and I wish it looked more natural. Any tricks? First off, that is my middle name. Woo, see? So that's cool. <laughs> see? I spell it differently, but if you, you ever you wondered what the K along. was, it's Kylie. <laughs> um, <laughs> so one thing I really wish I, I realized in the beginning is that you could you can be cool as a photographer, and you can be yourself. <laughs> I know this is weird, but be cool. you can be cool and play set like <laughs> pretend like us. Oh yeah. So this is oh, what we did. Oh, ben. I'm gonna, ben, this no. is what we did last night for five we've been, hours. We've been playing Star Trek Settlers of Catan for five hours. That's why we all look really oh, tired, so and why I'm wearing glasses. So annoying. Um. So oh yeah, I'm trying to cut out. Well, he was rude. <laughs> um. So I I grew up in St. Augustine, Florida, and when I was starting out, a lot of the photographers there that I saw were very traditional. So I had like my couch personality, which was me at home, which was very sarcastic. And I would say like, that's what she said after a lot of things. And then when I was meeting clients or shooting, I would have a totally different personality that was just strictly business because I thought that's how I had to be. Um, and the problem with that is that people who were hiring me saw me as an employee. They just saw me as a business person who was showing up to shoot. And they couldn't relate to me because I wasn't making the kind of jokes that they would laugh at because I, I would be afraid to. I wouldn't say that's what she said on a joke because I'd be like, oh, I can't do that. I'm a business person. But once I realized I could mesh the two, I found that people were opening up way more. They were feeling more natural. They were viewing me as someone that they didn't have to, like, be on in front of. They could just kind of be themselves and, like, mesh into each other without feeling awkward. Yeah, I think it's important to just be, like, a real human in front of your clients because – then they'll be like, oh, it's okay. This isn't a scary thing now. Yeah. Because it's super scary to have your photo taken. It's like really mm -hmm. revealing and you have to be so open to allow someone to like come into that space and especially like saying, like, okay, you know, kiss and get really close and hug. Yeah. Like that's not something that people do all the time. <laughs> so you have to like build trust for sure at first. And then um, and then there's some other things. Like feel super good at it. I, I like the biggest eye opener in the last two years has been not because it's easy to if your couple is on fire together and, and you don't have to get them to a space they're just like oh this is you, if you have to have those couples yet they're coming um, <laughs> uh, you know maybe Chris, yeah maybe, <laughs> well, hopefully but you know it, you, you have the couples that are on fire together and you don't have to like get them to a space to get them to connect like, oh this is easy you can just tell them oh just go over there and just pull each other um, but the last two years kind of thinking about it and speaking on the subject of not telling people to go do a thing, but giving them a reason to do a thing. So instead of saying, go, do you guys, oh, you guys just like kiss for a second, like give them a reason to kiss and giving them, um, if they're not talking to each other, giving them conversation to kind of prompt that. Um, say like, okay, I want you guys to place them in the spot you want to, you, know, you want to shoot them in. Um, just get really close, you know, and I want you to just, Look at each other, and I want you to take a moment, and, and uh, I want you to start and say a moment you were most proud of the other person. And that's a really vulnerable thing to say uh, if they've never done that before or shared that moment. Instead of, and then hopefully, I mean, who cares if they kiss or not? But like, the point is, like, you're giving them something to talk about that's going to get them to connect. That if they do kiss or do hug, it's going to be more natural than you saying, "Go wrap, go put your arm around his neck like this," and then you know, yeah. instead of you actually posing them. So. Yeah, it's super We're helpful. Working on things like spend a day or just have a little journal and it's thing on your on your phone and jot down little things as you think of like little prompts you can give people if they're not talking because they might be nervous or you might be awkward. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's kind of nice because you can rely on their relationship to make things happen. You can just say like, tell her this, and they know each other better than you know them, so you can kind of help them mm -hmm. help each other. Yep. Yeah. Also, um, well. That thought just left. I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> um, no, so uh, yeah. I always try and get my couples moving, um, especially like at the start of the session. So I always have them walk away um, so that when I start shooting, they're, they're not facing the camera and they can kind of hear the clicking, but um, it's an easier way for them to get used to it. Uh, so having them walking, have a, if you have a lot of space, and having them run 
back and forth or something like that. Um, because then they start to just interact with each other. And, yeah. and also, I tell people not to look at me pretty much at all. And, and getting them, um, like prepping them beforehand, saying like what your intentions are for the shoot yeah. and how you shoot is also really important. So, so they're not going into it blind. Yeah, like, so, yeah. so just like simple things like saying, hey guys, remember why we're here? Like it's because you guys love each other. I mean, don't say that, but say something cute. You say something yeah, super yeah. cute, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so just, just like getting them into a better headspace right before you just start clicking the camera. Yeah. Um, I always let people know that I want them to pay attention to each other and just kind of interact with each other and that I'm going to put them in a, a really beautiful space and that I'll move around them and I'll let them know if they need to, to move at all. But Tell them like, yeah. there's like no right or wrong way to do this. Yeah. Like this is for them. Or just keep reminding, like constantly throughout the shoot, like reminding them why they're there. It's like after 20 minutes and they've walked, they're gonna, in their heads they're gonna be like, "Am I doing? Am I doing this right?" Mm -hmm. And if they know that, like, "Oh wait, this is this is for us. Like we're getting married. This is amazing." And also, like, this place is beautiful. Yeah. And also, he's got our back because we hired him mm -hmm. or yeah. her. Yeah. Um, they can't tell my gender. Yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> hired him or her. Uh, <laughs> so let's, cool. So let's there's a lot. There's, there's a, a lot. A lot of practice with that yeah. one. Like that came over time. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Um, cool. So next up, um, Ken says, how do you balance depth of field and allowing locations to shine through in your photos? Oh. You guys might be better on Yeah. So Phil and I both shoot in Oregon a lot, which is fast and beautiful, and there's mountains and waterfalls and everything, basically. And stuff. Ooh, sorry, Ben. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> pretty things. Um, so I try not to shoot long lenses like basically I don't shoot anything over a 50 when I'm shooting in big places um, I shoot a lot of 35 and 24 because I think the context of where you are is really important as the connection of the couple especially if it's a place that they chose together yeah. um, and a lot of our couples here are really into nature so it makes sense um, but depth of field I, uh, I mean I generally in somewhere in the twos Two eight for for yeah. shots like that. Mm -hmm. I think like the only thing I, you taught me this is like to like or just remind me of that. It's like when you're somewhere that's really beautiful, there's like the tendency to go up to the thing that's really beautiful and put them right in front of there, yeah. and then you completely lose the depth, and you can shoot, yeah. you know, and not have like the crazy or your you risk missing focus shooting like wide open on a thing, just pull them off a bit like. 10, 20 feet, and then you can shoot it, you know. Yeah. I'm more around yeah. like two five, two eight as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hate just like, or especially if they're if they're close up and you're trying to get a background in and they're like, their faces are entwined and then it's like, yeah. this face is in focus and then she's making out like a ghost. Because <laughs> he's super blurry. Yeah. So yeah. Any, anytime I see someone shooting in a really beautiful place with a 70 to 200, I'm like, what are you doing? So, Unless you're trying to bring up a background, like yeah. a mountaintop that you're trying to like, yeah purposefully do, but if you're just, um, but I know Ben shoots it really. <laughs> so, that's okay. um, that good, that we shoot it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I love letting the location shine through just as much as the couple, so just bringing a balance to that. Like, you don't want all tiny people photos, obviously, because it's an engagement session and they want photos of, of each wedding. other. No, oh, yeah, or wedding, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. yeah, and I I pretty much always shoot a 1.8, and a lot of the times when I'm picking locations, um, a lot of it is the actual landscape, but most of it's the color. Um, so for me, I, when I shoot a 1.8, most of the time the background becomes shapes and colors, which is what I love. Um, so I look for pretty colors, and for me the desert is one of my favorites, so that's why I shoot out there so much. It's less about the weird, funky landscape and more about just the tones that I love out there. That's awesome. So, Cool. Um, and I also just to, I think maybe a mix of that is important. Yeah. Like definitely. both because it's not like I everything is. Like, I'm winking at myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you definitely want some close ups as well. Uh, yeah. So I mean I do. Well, close ups as well. I but, cool. I do too. Right? That's great. Um, yeah, that's good, guys. All right. So next up is Brian. Brian says, with so many creative people wanting to keep their processes, their knowledge, etc., to themselves. What is it that has inspired you to be so open and sharing of uh, your knowledge with others? That's how we got better. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I just remember asking when I was starting out tons of people questions, and the people who didn't answer me or just said, like, figure it out on your own were really annoying to me. Yeah. Even though I know they're busy and everything, but the people who actually took the time to help were super helpful. Hmm. Yeah. I don't yeah. think there's, like, a... <laughs> Because I don't think there's a big secret or mystery that people are trying to keep. Yeah. Like, they're, it's, I don't know. The answers generally are not as mysterious and yeah. crazy as you think. Yeah. Yeah, finding a community and, and building up, you know, having actual friends as opposed to, like, the emails that we get. We get a lot of Facebook messages and say, like, hey, I'm coming through your city. I'd love to, to get coffee with you and ask, and like, they say pick your brain, but they're really just saying, I want a mini workshop. That's kind of like a turnoff. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest learning thing is just like having a community of people in your city or like building actual relationships with people like uh, Sarah and I have been editing next to each other for like the past two years um, and that's just been the best there's like the, we share presets and we say oh like how did you do this and like get back and forth and um, there's like no competition yeah. in that respect and and, and all, also I forgot but when I was first starting out I was part of this really big Flickr community um, called SWPB, I don't know if you guys, any of you remember this, but Flickr was cool once, and I was on it, and there was this huge, just wealth of knowledge on there. Um, anytime anyone had a question about, like, what do I do in this situation, it was just everyone was helping each other out, and it was people from all over the world. Um, and that really, really helped in the beginning, especially when you're just like, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing like, with anything. So um, if you guys... I think the forums might be up, and it's still probably a really good resource for like, questions that you might have. Um, yeah, Flickr. Yeah. Cool. And just say, uh, oh, you, you go. Okay, I was saying, just saying, just so you guys know, when I'm looking down, it's not because I'm falling asleep in between. <laughs> it's just like really I'm more of questions. Yeah, there's so many. Um, <laughs> his screen's blank. He's blank. Yeah, <laughs> my screen is totally blank right now. Uh, I'm just looking at cat videos on YouTube. Aww. Um, so Michelle said, what is your favorite quote? I know that's a super random one, but I kind of like it. And if you guys don't have one, it's okay. It's a lot of pressure. But my favorite was Abe Lincoln said, if I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first six sharpening my ax, which is just like a brilliant thought on preparation. Um, so when I like, when I'm doing shoots and stuff like that, I try and plan a, like as much as I can out and not necessarily shot for shot, but more so like mood and feel as opposed to showing up on set for um, like an editorial shoot and just thinking I'll just wing it and hopefully get what I want. Um, I think that preparation for like mood boarding and brainstorming and all of that is pretty important. That's mine. Do you have one? Oh, so here, I gotta go. <laughs> um, man, I, yes, I having I favorite know, so. things like that is <laughs> I just don't, but. Some, sometimes like song lyrics will stick in my head for a really long time and I'll think about it over and over even like when I'm shooting and there's this one random song lyric that when you asked that like popped into my head that I've been thinking about a lot and it's uh, it's from a Modest Mouse song I can't remember oh Baby Blue Sedan and the line is it's hard to be a human being and it makes me just remember that empathy for everyone because everyone's going through different things and yeah. like being a human is super <laughs> weird and important yeah. to like relate to people. So yeah, I guess that's mine. Yeah. I, was trying to think of, I was trying to reference a really funny song there, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't remember, sort of I, can't remember the, I can't remember the verse to the thong song and I don't know if there is a verse. <laughs> it's like, I was thinking my head's like dumps like a truck, 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 guys <laughs> like what, what, baby pick up a, it's baby move that but oh well i thought there was like more to the song <laughs> and then i spent all my time thinking about that and i don't have a quote so. <laughs> he was just trying to make a joke <laughs> yeah. perfect um i saw let's see here's one hope says how on earth did you guys learn to shoot manual really really well that's just that's just <laughs> practice and yeah strictly practice when, yeah. when i first started i shot every single day no matter like even if i didn't have a person to shoot I like went outside and I made sure I was shooting something whether it was a bug or like a car or yeah. some like at a coffee shop I was just shooting constantly and I think like if you've never done that before um, like spend a long period of time shooting constantly then uh, I think it might be a nice 
challenge for you to like maybe take a month yeah. and, mm -hmm. and make sure to shoot every single day, even if it's just for five minutes um, and force yourself to shoot on manual because you want, um, Nessa says this a lot, she, you want your camera to feel like an extension of your body, like that you don't have to think about your settings at all because when you're thinking about settings and you're shooting a person, you're somewhere else, you're, you're caught up in your camera and not what's going on up there in front of it. Yeah, yeah. it should get to a point where you can see something happening and know you need to switch it and you can just go like this and then it happens and then you shoot them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it needs to be second nature. So yeah. anyway, shoot a lot. Yeah. That's, it's really the only way. It. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see, um, Gabriel, or Gabriel says, I was wondering what your advice is for getting all the legal side of freelance photography set up, like sole proprietor, LLC, EIN, DBA, contract. Chase Bank. <laughs> They're awesome. I walked in there and I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, I need to start, a, I need to have a business and an account and like register in the state and they did all of it for me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Chase visit their business. Banking is so rad. You walk in you, like an idiot like I am. And I was just like, I was like, I am receiving money and I need to have a business <laughs> name and like they'll register your business name there. What? They'll okay. file you with the state. Yeah. That's Chase, Chase is cool. Oh, that's, that's and and that's LLC, true. all that stuff they do there. I mean, most yeah. of this stuff is online and it's pretty easy to do. Yeah. Um, but also, I would say right off the bat, get an accountant. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. Fucking up on taxes, sorry for saying. That's all you want. Is <laughs> not fun. So yeah, taxes um, are the worst. Yeah, yeah. Hire an accountant. I think um, they'll they'll be the ones who can help determine whether you should be an LLC or sole proprietor mm -hmm. or any of that. Um, so they'll know what the benefits are to each one, um, and then you don't have to study up on them because you're hiring someone already has. Or just go to Chase. Yeah, just walk into Chase. Just be like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. And they'll walk you through like all the benefits of everything. Oh I love them. Uh, yeah. So That's easy. Funny. All right, so let's see. Taylor Parker. Hi, Taylor. Says, and any, I feel so weird. I feel like, and this caller says, <laughs> um, Taylor says, at any time, do you give your clients any type of gifts? Also, do you send your clients welcome packets? Um, so what I have found super beneficial is sending um, wedding clients um, gift cards for a restaurant right before their wedding, like two weeks before their wedding, and saying, like, I know you guys are probably super stressed out right now. Have a date night on me. Um, $10 to Arby's. Yeah, <laughs> I just give them a $10 to Arby's gift card. Um, <laughs> that's like there. 10 Sam Sammy's up to yeah, five for five. Um, but yeah, so that's that's been super helpful because that means whenever I show up on their wedding day, Almost the first thing that they say is thank you so much for that night. It was awesome. We were able to just reconnect, and it's like an instant connection for us too. So they feel a lot friendlier with me than they would if I just didn't really communicate or do that. For them. I think that's awesome. That's I might idea. steal that idea. I, think that's I am stealing that idea. No, I'm gonna steal no, this. No, 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 I'm gonna do it. Um, uh, both of us give client packages like after the wedding. We send out USBs with a bunch of Portland-made stuff because we like our city so much. Um, and most of the time it's just chocolate and coffee and salt. Portland has a weird thing about sea salt. Yeah, so we're, don't we're really, pretentious about it. really, really pretentious about salt here. Um, and it's, so basic. Yeah, it's very it's odd, but it's, it's harvested at the Oregon coast, guys. Um, <laughs> By hand. Oh. <laughs> so, but yeah, so it's just like a bunch of little gifts and a handwritten note that says thank you so much. and and something specific about their wedding that you remember. Um, yeah, just yeah. so that they know that you care. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. Getting anything in the mail is cool. Yeah. Anything outside of like what they think they're getting. Yeah. yeah. So, and I generally don't tell my couples that they get that. I say that they get a USB drive. Yeah. And then it shows up with the package of yeah. little kiss. Yeah, so favorite business motto is under promise over deliver. So just like Sarah said, tell them you're sending them a USB and then send them a USB and all these nice things. Um, it's just super unexpected. And really like it, so. um, next up, um, Alan says, how often do you communicate with your clients before a session, a couple days prior or a day prior, et cetera? Um, so I think Phil touched on it earlier, kind of like fear of the unknown for people. Like when people come to a session not knowing what to expect, it's going to make them feel weird and a little bit nervous for it. Um, so what I've always done is like a week or so before the session, I'll just kind of tell them how the session's going to work. I tell them like, 
we're going to hike out to a cool spot and then shoot on our way back. Um, when we're shooting, don't worry, I'll be like directing you guys, give me little cues, all of that. Um, he just started sweating, mm -hmm. that's weird. Um, or maybe I've been sweating the whole time. <laughs> um, but that's super helpful. And then just the day before, I just say like, um, hey, really excited for our shoot. I'll meet you guys here at this time just to give them a quick little note. Same for you guys, pretty much. Yeah, I try to like, I tell people, I, I know, I, to, uh, it's, it's hard when it's like a wedding and they book like a year out to like stay in touch and like have a communication. But I was, I put it out there that like if you have any questions about anything, even if it's not photography related, that which you know sometimes comes by even asking the email a lot. <laughs> but it's good that they're asking for your opinion because you want to have your hand in like, whether it's the wedding day or the session day as much mm -hmm. as possible so that Especially you're timing. Timing, yeah. yeah. Timing, lighting, setups. Like here, Phil, we're thinking about these two areas for the ceremony. Um, what do you think? Um, stuff like that, um, but at least for a wedding, trying to meet up just for like coffee or something like that or a beer, um, sometime midway through the, the process or you know from booking to shooting and then uh, like about a week out, like seven days out, I have a phone conversation with them. I can't do email. I have to talk to them on the phone and get a notepad and I write down every single thing that they're, even if they have a timeline, so we, we walk through the whole timeline. And, and set expectations for that, and same with same with the portrait session. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I basically do the same thing. Yeah. Cool. Um, next up is from Marlena. Um, this was an interesting question. Other than storyboarding before the shoot, how do you capture variety during style slash fashion shoot? I always find myself shooting a bunch of portraits or full body shots, but I struggle to get variety. Yeah. So. Um, when I first read this, my instinct was, it seems so obvious to me, just don't shoot as many portraits or full body shots. But I remember being there, and I remember how like tunnel vision I could get on a set, and I still get it with certain things. Um, but it's, that's essentially what it is, is you, you might get stuck in tunnel vision and just shoot a lot of the same thing and forget to step back and think, okay, how can I be more creative? How can I step outside of the box? How can I... Um, shoot details that are super close up that m I might not think of like maybe just a shot that's framed here of like a smiling mouth or like hands holding a certain way um, and that's just something that I think the instinct comes with time but until then taking a second even if you just step back and say like all right guys just give me one second I'm gonna look around and see what I can shoot differently um, and just think I mean really I think that's what it comes yeah. down to is thinking about what you can do differently I would say maybe each shoot that you set up, like challenge yourself to try one new thing. Like if you never shoot with a really wide lens or you never shoot yeah. with a really long lens, like force yourself to take ten minutes and shoot with you, shoot with it, and see what you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, like I never, I was so scared of just shooting the twenty-four, mm -hmm. and like I would, I brought it to a, a, a session and shot a bunch. And my initial back of camera looking at reaction in my head was like, ooh, I, hate, I would. <laughs> Because it's not what I've done before. Yeah. Like it, when you try something new, you might hate it initially on the back of the camera, but then like wait a month and then look at it and you're like, oh wait, this is what I wanted to do. Like it might not have that initial gratification of oh this is you know I was trying to do something new because you're so used to doing what you've been doing and looking at that. Yeah. So it might even look bad to you, but then give it some time, like let it marinate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, marinate. Yeah. And also like if you're stuck in like that tunnel vision, like. I don't know how to like force yourself to remember to do this, but just like take a step back, like yeah. take like ten feet back, take twenty feet back, and see what it looks like from every angle. So like start here, then here, then here, then get super close, and like yeah. and then move around. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. One thing I actually remember doing, I just remembered I did this um, in my first couple of years. I would set an alarm on my phone for the middle of the shoot. That was just when it would go off. It was just a reminder to like. Just take a second and think about what I'm actually doing and like change things up because sometimes when you're shooting, you'll just shoot for an hour and then the sun will be down and be like, oh, I forgot to even like think about that stuff. So I literally just have my alarm go off and it's a really good idea. Little shoot. Um, Phil, so we're halfway, so can you play a halfway song for us? Yeah. We're halfway. Oh my gosh, you've gone through so many questions. Oh, can I do requests? requests? <laughs> yes. So for the, we'll do, <laughs> at the very end, we'll yeah. do a song by Phil. So send in your request. <laughs>
the dad room. All right, so next up is from Jen. She says, how long did it take for you to get your dream clients and how did you attract them? <laughs> uh, so how long did it take for you to get your dream clients and how did you attract them? Uh, okay. As anyone. <laughs> yes. You go, you go, you go. You're, 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 um, like, I'd say, like, from going full-time, like, once I made the, the jump to go full-time, um, and obviously a lot of steps in the middle, I'd say, like, two and a half, three years, really, before I started, like, uh, before I got the couple, I was like, oh, this is the one, and it was the one that, like, I shot the wedding for free, and, like, flew across the U.S. to shoot it for free, because it was, like, my dream couple, but it was a lot of, like, you know, knowing what that is, you know, because if you don't know, then you know what your goal is. And, and setting up, you know, like living in Ohio for a full year is when I went full time. I was living in Ohio and I wanted to shoot like dream couple in the woods or just some like some, someone with some flair mm -hmm. um, or some kind of you know, personality. Yeah. <laughs> or no, uniqueness and, and, and more nature. Yeah. And I wasn't, I didn't have it. So I was shooting like couples in their homes that were like my friends that I could experiment with and just setting things up to put it out there to slowly close that gap of like people seeing. Because if you're not booking it, you're not shooting it, so you're not showing it. So you have to like, you know, even if it's just friends or like, you know, going up to people that might be friends of your friends or you know, being social, and asking and, people to yeah. shoot with you. And yeah. this is like such an annoying answer, but you have to show what you want to shoot in order to shoot it. Um, so your website should be, or your portfolio, or whatever you have, should be curated as much as possible to direct. To attract a certain client, and then also to repel a certain client. Yeah. Um, and the annoying response, or people. So we we you know we've had a bunch of workshops and smaller intimate ones, and people we always say that, and they always say, well, you, know, you say that, and it's easier said to show what you want to shoot. But I'm not. Where do I even start? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because even if you don't have friends that are like your your cool cool friend look looking people, or like people that you want to shoot, like where do you start? And we all do this. We use Instagram mm -hmm. to find people. Also, Facebook is awesome. Yeah. There's a algorithm within Facebook that, say you're traveling to a city, or even in your own city. So if I want to find like a couple to shoot uh, for something, I'm like, cool, I'm on fire. About I want I need to I need to do something, I need to shoot something, and I want to make it about something. I shoot something I haven't done before. Get on Facebook, and if you type in friends of my friends that live in, you know, Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. Then it's gonna list everyone that is like acquaintances. They're like they're friends of my friends, and then it's a cool way to find new yeah. people. And then also using Instagram, and for you that can as also well. add into the algorithm who are in a relationship. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you can find couples. So. Sounds a little creepy, but I when you reach out to them, just be like, "Hey, so we have mutual friends. I'm a photographer. Um, you guys are beautiful. I would love to set something up really low key. Here's the inspiration behind it. If not, totally cool." And I say it in a given month, I send out like fifty of those emails, mm -hmm. yeah. and I only hear back from maybe one or two. Yeah, so it's so a lot of hit and miss. Yeah, you have to work for yeah. it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Cool. Good. Good on that. Yeah. Sure. But it takes time. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Next up, Kristen says, "How do you nail focus at one point eight almost every time?" I don't. That, I don't. No. That doesn't happen. That's just not a thing. So what we show is the ones where we have decent yeah. focus. In it. <laughs> we post all of our out of focus videos. Be yeah. very aware when you are shooting them like that. This is like what I do. I'm like, oh, let's try one four today or for this one. One two. One two. I'm, I'm gonna take way more than I normally do just to make sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that's a. It's just you. Yeah, yeah, and then just yeah. call out the ones that don't that yeah. focus. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, next up. That might be a thing with Nikon. Like a difference? Yeah, might be better. Uh, you shoot Canon too, right? I shoot Canon. Yeah, yeah, we all shoot Canon, so we miss focus a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, Canon will not be sponsoring this next one. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, I just, love Canon. I'm just saying. Out of focus is trending, though. Yeah. That's a good one. Everybody can shoot it. Canon's about to take off. Um, Jessica says, um, since you take a lot of care in editing, on average, how many photos do you provide wedding clients? Thanks. Um, for me, it's 400 to 600. Um, and they know that up front. That way, you're setting expectations. I say four to 600, and I always deliver 700 because I can't cold. I said so many. I know. Ah, uh, same. Yeah. Like, I, on the lowest end, it's like 350 for like a smaller, like a, like a six-hour wedding, I've done yeah. 350 before. 
<clears throat> there wasn't a lot going on, not a lot of getting ready, not a lot of details, not a lot of dancing at the end. That covers so much of the bulk, like details and like prep and stuff like that. There's none of that. Um, I get I get a lot of insane. They're like, oh, no, they're like getting 325 or something, 350. Yeah. But they have no idea because it's good coverage. So. Yeah. so I don't tell the couples how many photos they get unless they ask me. And I tell them, you know, it's still like an average of what, like, 50 photos an hour. Yeah, which is all great. It's like almost a photo a minute. Yeah, it's pretty so. awesome. Um, what about for engagement sessions? Uh, on the low end, 60. High end, 100. That's a lot. Yeah. I do like 30 to 50. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Usually like closer to like 35 ish. Yeah. I usually deliver like 90. Yeah. Yeah. If you look through my that's blog post, actually, that's what I deliver. Um, it's really? those ones, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So That's whatever great. you do deliver, whether it's 100 or 10, just be upfront with your clients. That way they know. Because if mine were, if I didn't tell them, they would probably be expecting more, but they know that to expect about like 20 to 40. Years. It's hard because it's like a good shot, and then, you know, the girl's just laughing in one, and she's more serious, and she's looking a different way. I give all yeah. three of those just yeah. because I'm like, well, she might like the way she's yeah. coming off in one of these more than I can see. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, Bianca says, how do you prepare creatively for each session? Um, I feel like for me it's more about the night before, just making sure that I like have a kind of chill night, and sometimes that involves a chick flick and lying on the couch and eating sushi. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> like pretty much as long as I'm not stressed out, then yeah. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. um, I feel like you prepare. I get stressed out still <laughs> every time, every shoot. Every single shoot, like the day of, it's like it ruins my day. Like if I have a shoot at like like five, <laughs> it does. If I have a shoot at like a, like a you know two hours before sunset in the summer, that's like starting at like seven o'clock. I can't do. I can't be productive. I can't like do anything. I'm like a mess. So like I'm throughout the day, I'm like I have a bunch of inspiration internet tabs of just um, you know photos. I'm not like going to, looking through the photos to kind of like copy the photos, but photos that make me feel something. Because I have to be reminded, I can't like show up to, I can't just do normal stuff and then show up to a shoot and be like on. I have to like remind my brain of like what the feeling I want to get out of my photos so that when I see the feeling in the session or I, I, I'm more aware of it. So I have like just a bunch of inspiration on, on Pinterest and a bunch of, you know, internet tabs. I look through those. Yeah. Some music, like kind of the whole night. Yeah, that's and true. Same with Ben said, it's so like. Much. Yeah, just reminding myself of what that feeling is that I'm looking for and what I capture. Yeah. I don't do a whole lot of prep. I like, well, maybe look at a Pinterest board just to get my mind like thinking about stuff, but not necessarily specific. You just roll up. I don't know how you do that. I, I so much know. anxiety. <laughs> I don't know. Every time. I, don't, I, I think I used to have more. Yeah. But I used to have a lot more. I'm just, I've just accepted it that I. Uh, every day I have a shoot, a wedding, portrait session, I'm going to be nervous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I like to make sure my fear is already. Once I start, once I yeah. see them, I'm fine. But it's like yeah, it's the anticipation of starting stuff. starting a thing. Yeah. Especially if you're like, I'm even more nervous when I think like I have to, I have to make something better than I've ever made before. Because I'm like, I'm all set up. There's no excuses. Yeah. Like, yeah. So one thing for me, um, actually I did an intimate session um, was that two days ago? Yeah, yeah. When I got here. Um, and for sessions like that and things that, I mean, I guess almost every session, where I've, I know that I want to kind of step out a little bit and create something different than I have been creating, um, I make little shot lists like this. Um, and some, there, it's not like I'm going to pull it up and use like shot for shot. It's just when I do take that step back, like we talked about earlier. I'll like look through this and go, okay, that one would be cool for this couple. Um, they'd be super into that, or this one might not be. Um, so it's not like I shoot everything on here. It just kind of sparks new ideas, and the actual drawing process of this for me sparks new posing ideas that I would have never oh. thought about if I didn't take the time to sit down and do it. I love these drawings. I feel like you should well, they're scan on, these. Is they're this, on fire in one. Yes, <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> I'll have a shot later. <laughs> three, three pairs of underwear and a baby <laughs> on the ground. And a baby on the ground. <laughs> right. like, I'm not going to say that. It's like the the moment's interested. Like, okay, it's good. Yeah. Oh, you guys should see Phil's drawings. Can so, I get I'm going to get that one off the wall. Oh, the acrylic? Yeah, so <laughs> Phil's like kind of an master painter. Is. This is so, Sarah's Christmas gift yeah. last year. 
This is an original. <laughs> that's like as good as oh I my guess. gosh. That's, that is a tiger. That's a tiger. So what Phil is great at is not being able to picture animals whatsoever from memory. No, I, I can't picture anything from memory. Like, what does it look like in my head? There's just, I and mean, it was just not come in. I know I can describe what it is, but I can't see it in my head. There's a huge disconnect. There's just like. Two wires that are just super loose up there, just like sparking <laughs> away, like trying to connect to something. Has no idea what it is. <laughs> no idea. All right. Um, next up, um, Allie Mind Tree says, "How do you achieve rich blues in your skies during daylight, as opposed to blowing them out to a total white or lightish blue?" Um, so I shoot backlit most of the time, mm -hmm. so I don't really get that as often. But the way to do it is just front light. I think right. Yeah, I mean, during a, a bright blue sky, like front lit, it's yeah. gonna be like not ideal light, I imagine. But I mean, if you were to shoot at like golden hour and front light it, it would be nice because potentially if there's Oh, yeah. Out, I yeah. I guess front light it or side light it. Yeah, and then when you're actually editing, if you go, if you use Lightroom, go to HSL, it's under the tone curve, and that allows you to edit each color individually. So, for example, you could take the blues and bring down the luminance of it, which means it'll be darker and richer, or you could bring up the saturation, or you could change the hue of the blue, um, and that helps too. Yeah. Yeah. I'll actually have a blog post on that pretty soon. It's Ooh. already drafted. It's already there. Um, That's next exciting, up. Ben. Woohoo! Um, I had way too much coffee. <laughs> You're shaking. I know, I'm like... <laughs> Sarah's been nervous this entire time. She's just freaking so out. scary. Um, just kidding. Christine says, best way to authentically reach your Instagram following for real people and future clients? Writing. Helps the most. Yeah. Writing? Yeah, like writing like personal messages on your Instagram and not just like yeah. one shot from the today. Yeah. Um, showing, I think Instagram is, is cool because you, you can post you can post a photo that doesn't have to be tied into a set. So yeah. if you're trying something new and you only got one photo from that session, let's yeah. say you went out and shot something that was like way outside your comfort zone, but you got one photo from you can use Instagram for that. But writings, you know, I, I started getting more interaction when I started writing, um, you know, more personal. Like this is the kind of stuff I want to shoot. Like, and then telling them why yeah. this is why you want to mm -hmm. shoot this. Um, that helped a lot. And keeping it just super curated. Like yeah. being really, really hard on yourself to yeah. like, nope, this is not thin in my feed. Yeah. Be picky about it. Yeah. Um, I just post yeah. a lot. I've been trying, this past couple of weeks, I've been trying to post every single day and mm -hmm. multiple times a day. And that's been growing my following a lot, yeah. I guess. But yeah. I don't use hashtags that much, like maybe yeah. two or three yeah. per post. So I, I use them and it's actually it's super helpful. Like I always used to think hashtags were so dumb. Like two years ago, I just would see them and be like, "That's oh, so silly," but they're, they actually are helpful. Yeah. And yeah, and if you like have trouble finding hashtags, just search people who shoot similar work and look at what they're using. Um, just copy. Just copy. But um, sorry, I'm so deleting. It's okay. Roll closer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's super helpful because if someone's searching that hashtag for inspiration, which I do often, and they see something they like, they'll look and. See if your entire feed is something they like. So mm -hmm. It just gives you an opportunity to be in front of more people. Um, <laughs> Ketch says, does anyone want dilithium for tritanium? Pretty please. Um, I definitely, I, I, I want tritanium. So I need I'm just not water. <laughs> I need water. I'm nowhere near it. I can't roll, I can't roll a 10. Sheep for what? Sheep for what? Sheep for what? <laughs> okay, so if anyone has not played Summoners <laughs> oh, Time, man. you should. And also, if you have not played the Star Trek edition, then you have no idea what we're talking about. I want to say, I want to so say, say, most of them have no idea. I yeah. want to say that we're not super nerds. Like, we don't like just we don't have, like, a ton there, of board though. games. And like, I'm just like, I'm very like, what when the setup the game I was like, I hate this. This looks so stupid. <laughs> really it's like because the the <laughs> board, it's not like a cool board. You have to piece it all together, and it looks like kind of shitty. This is the nice. board. <laughs> but Who won last night? Ben um, won, 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 won last night. You did? It is so intense. That's right. <laughs> Every move counts. I, I, I don't want to talk about this. Like, <laughs> I want to sell, sell on the fact that we're not like, I hate fantasy stuff, and I generally don't like You do? Yeah. What about Harry Potter? Eh. 
Oh, I like the scares. One of one of them was really scary. I like that you one. do. What? I hate Game of Thrones. I think it's the worst. But what do you like? You like uh, Lord of the Rings? I like love it. I enjoyed it. Did or, you? Okay. We're not going to get <laughs> No, we're cool. We're not nerds. We have tattoos. But, but that game, no, 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 no. That game, though, is making me a nerd. Yeah. That game? It's so yeah. We played it until, like, two last night. Yeah, we really did. And we're going to play as soon as this hangout is over. We're going to be honest. We're going to rate. It's so nice in Portland, and they're visiting for the first time. We're staying inside of the games. <laughs> All right. Um, we should get back to real. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Isabel says, I'm 18. I am still in high school and trying to create a photography business, but I don't know how to direct and interact with my clients. I can be awkward and I'm introverted, but I love people. It just doesn't always show. Any tips? Um, I would say, like, meet up with your clients beforehand and have coffee with them and yeah. just chat about anything uh, right before a shoot. I, I, I think I used to do that. I used to make sure to meet people at somewhere so that we were just sitting down talking through everything like their lives who they are as people Absolutely. yeah don't 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 necessarily just talk about photography like have yeah. a real human conversation with them about who they are yeah. and i know they're super expensive but there's there's so many of them like a photo conference or workshop is so good starting out like when i was right, right before i went full-time i went to sam and dan dan and dan sam like i was one like four years ago in new york maybe five years Four and a half years ago, and I my, my mom helped me pay for it, and I had to like scrounge cash to go to it. And it was before I went full time, and more than anything, it gave me confidence to go forward in it. But it was like covered all the questions I wanted to, you know, also about business. Yeah. So those are huge too, and, and conferences are cool so you hear from a bunch of speakers. Um, they're just so helpful for start starting out, like just getting one under your belt, and you'll just learn, you'll walk away with just like overwhelming amount of knowledge. Yeah, it's, it's hard starting and. Uh, just kind of asking random questions and learn as you go, but you know, yeah. yeah, I would say try try not to think of clients as clients. As like clients. try and yeah. get that that thought out of your head and yeah, think of them as people. as people. <laughs> yeah. Because it's scarier when you're like, oh my god, they're paying me money and I need to perform. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, that gives you anxiety, and then you you're like, I need to be professional. And we kind of were talking about this earlier, but just try to professional just means good at photography. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't even have to mean that. It's That's true. a good point. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll touch on the introverted, introverted part because I'm super introverted, actually. Um, for me, I think the easiest way to get past that was to ask questions instead of like showing up and thinking, like, okay, what am I going to talk about next? I would just say, like, do you guys have a trip coming up that you're excited about? Or what are you most excited about for your wedding day? How did you guys meet? What do you guys do for fun? Like, do you like settlers of Catan? Did you like settlers of Catan? <laughs> um, that right. kind of stuff is super easy because it just gets them talking about things they're excited about. Mm -hmm. um, say like, what did you study in school, or this or that. Um, and for me, it was just a super easy way to get past that because I didn't have to provide entertainment. I just had it to provide a question, and they kind of entertained themselves. Yeah. So. Yeah, because when, when they're excited about like talking about movies a lot with my couples, and they yeah. get like on these roles talking about like weird horror movies and stuff like that and then they get mm. so excited and then that becomes like the conversation for the whole day so just finding some kind of common ground yeah mm. cool um next question what does victoria says what does a normal day look like for each of you behind the scenes <laughs> 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 yeah, you <laughs> um say a wednesday when you don't have any shoots where do you like to sit and edit? Oh, this is good yeah sit um, and edit. Sit and edit. yeah so i have a nice I have a nice desk that I've been out of that in my living room, and there's a bunch of windows because I like to look outside. But normal day is emailing and captioning for Instagram and Facebook and all the planning shoots and all that kind of stuff, and then nerd stuff like that. Yeah, talking. so I, I try and get all my emails and social media stuff like ready in the morning first thing because I don't like to go back to that stuff. <laughs> later on in the day. So I try and get as much of that done in the morning as possible. At least like the long. longer yeah. correspondence. Yeah, so I do a couple hours of that. And then if I have something to edit, then I go, I don't know, sometimes I sit on couches, sometimes I sit at a, at a desk, sometimes I go to coffee shops, because I feel like going to a coffee shop holds me accountable and makes me actually do something. Yeah. Um, but if we don't have that, pretty good, like just like, let's crush out. Let's just yeah. keep going. Yeah. Um, but if we 
don't have anything to edit, or we're not going to edit that day, then we go do something outside because that's yeah. because we shoot outside a lot and we want to like like being outside. Like yeah. I feel like you you guys are the same way. Yeah. So yesterday, for example, we went to the coast and just hung out and built a fire there and the pole ball. played the games. Pole ball. Yeah. 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 Um next up, let's see. Um, Elizabeth says, how much did you shoot your first wedding for? Mm. So I shot mine for, I think, like $300. First paid? 300 yeah. That was mine, too? On Craigslist. I, I, yeah. think I, I think I did 500 Mine was 300 and it was a yeah. friend of mine. And I was, nice. it was basically yeah. just so I could rent gear. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I started my first, like, year and a half were entirely booked on Craigslist. Wow. Yeah. I changed all my black tones to purple. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? no, you yeah. didn't. Yeah, I did. Oh. That's awesome. Like the black tones, I, I put purple and all the shadows. You did? I did that too. Because I thought it looked like, not vintage. I was like, this, this looks yeah. like film. Like, oh my god. That's what I did too. Yeah. That's so my stuff was so crushed though, so it might as well have been that. Like the curve looked like this. Like this. Basically. Yeah, because I thought that like crushing the plaques was super cool. Like we can't see any detail. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Um, awesome. So we have time for one more. So, one more? And this one is for Sarah specifically. Oh. Says, how do you <laughs> so many adventurous wedding couples, or couples in elopements? Um, also, how do you find amazing locations, or do you have amazing couples that know those spots? Um, okay, so first part of the question, how, many, from how do you get Ariel. adventurous weddings, couples, elopements? Yeah. Uh, well, we kind of touched on this earlier, but showing what you want to shoot. So I want to be, I want to shoot things out in the wilderness. And um, so I show a lot of that and you think that that's all I shoot basically, but um, I curate my feed so you don't see the other things that I shoot. Um, because I do shoot some like ballroom stuff as well, especially in the winter, because that's like not as many people want to go outside. But um, to be more specific about starting out shooting that, um, I started my business in Idaho, and it's a mountain, mountain state, mountainous area, and I was shooting a lot of ballroom stuff and uh, like really, really just not great venues. And I was like, we are in the mountains. Like, there's mountains all around us, and there's like rivers and trees. And why am I shooting here so much? Um, and so what I did is I asked a lot of friends to go out and take photos with me. Anyone who would let me, I would go. I would take a couple out and shoot like in the foothills or go up to the mountains or go to like a gorge or something like that and, and shoot and push it out there as much as possible. And then after doing a lot of that, and most of it was for free, um, I eventually uh, got a couple that like was having a campsite wedding. I was like, oh my God, yes, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and then I shot that and I knew it was going to be like, this is going to be the start of shooting. Um, stuff in nature so uh i made sure to like i don't know and i make sure to do i just like i shot it really well and I, it got featured and then um that sort of thing just kind of starts to tumble like yeah. snowball like so the more if you shoot one you're going to shoot another and then it starts to snowball into more and more and more yeah. um as far as locations it definitely location scout um if it's a place that i don't know very well then i will spend hours on the internet like literally zooming in on Google Maps, like yeah, just like moving it around and yeah. seeing the way the landscape is. Yeah. Um, I did that, I do that for recently, like Big Sur, I did that because I really needed like a good place to shoot. Um, and then in Oregon, we like, for example, yesterday we went out to the coast and that like, it's kind of like a dual purpose, like going out yeah. and seeing something pretty and getting your mind in the right place. And like, so hard to enjoy a place. You're like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> oh my God, put a couple right there though. I know. <laughs> but but it, it serves a dual purpose because it's like you're yeah. location scouting and thinking of shoots, but you're also just kind of enjoying life and getting your head in the right place. Um, yeah. Cool. But yeah, but now, now a lot of couples come to me for that specifically because that's what I put out. Yeah. So. Cool. Um, Phil was about to get really depressed because we had no requests. Can you believe that? We had no requests for your song. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Do we have any you guys requests? What, so about... what about this one? <laughs> this hit 90s classic. <laughs> you are my fire, the one 
desire believe when I say that I want it that way you are two worlds apart all the words that I and reach to your heart when I say